Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and as you can see, we have a special guest tire, one we featured before, Jake Adamarovich from Competitive Angler. Jake, welcome back, man. Good to see you again, Tim. Likewise. Jake, you're gonna be tying a variation today. What's the fly? It is the Soft Tackle Pertagon uh, featuring folding mill. Perfect. You're gonna love this one. You're gonna love that he's sharing the variation. Stay tuned. Okay, Jake, so when you give us a 360 of this fly, but this is not the one we're gonna tie. What do you call this fly, Jake? This is the Jake Soft Tackle Pertigon, SH Pertigon. Okay. Um, Folding Mill is carrying this 2019 fall. Um, they're doing it in olive and natural quill. Um, cool. Congrats, it, by the way. Thank you. It, it's a nice little blue wing. Um, just a great attractor pattern with a little hot spot. Um, we a little bit of leg movement maybe um it's just a great pattern that works okay so if people are interested in this one they can go to fooling mills i'm guessing competitive angler sells it yeah we'll have it here in the fall um probably november ish um i believe they're going to be in shops pretty much nationwide i'm hoping by christmas okay so november 2018 moving forward you'll probably start to see more about this fly but then We've teased you this for this one, or with this one, I guess, because uh, Jake has agreed to tie a variation of this pattern. So this is a really cool fly, but um, we just kind of use this as a teaser. Jake, let's get a clean hook in the vise, and let's show them your variation sans the soft tackle, okay? All righty, sounds good, here we right. go. All right, Jake, will you show us how to tie the variation of this one? Yes, I will. Here we go, we take a 230 Honic, mm -hmm. um, and then I take a, this is a size 16, Okay. I'm taking a, Copper 332nd um, countersunk bead. You got it. Uh, it's ones we sell at Competitive Angler here. You got it. Um, a little uh, product placement there product for everybody. Placement. And I'm going to take some uh, Benecki 12 odd again. Okay. Black. I'm going to start it behind a bead here. And I'm guessing that bead is a tungsten bead? It is. It, it, tungsten's everything I use except for lake flies. Okay. Um, and dry flies, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cut that there. Um, I get a little bit of Cock de Leon CDL, mm -hmm. uh, medium pardo, light pardo, depending on the quill. For this quill, I'm gonna use uh, medium because I'm gonna do a little bit of a, a ginger version. Yeah, that sounds good. So it uh, should match up well, but you know they, they have so many different colors now that you can match them pretty good, but. Medium's a good old standby. Yeah, I'm with you. There's so many different colors of the CDL, but whenever people ask, I tend to just say, get the medium. Medium is the... It, it covers your bases. I mean, don't, but I'm sure just like just like me, you probably have all the colors too. It's yeah, just, yeah. It's a, it, you know, basically comes down to preferences. Yeah, if you're a flat tire, you, for anyone watching out there, I'm sure you probably own a few different ones. And if you don't, we're, you're hearing from two of us saying <laughs> you don't have to. But you should. But you should. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed, Jake, you prefer to have that tail tied on the top of the hook shank? Uh, yeah, that one I actually pulled down on. Okay. I'm gonna get this. Did right. it spin around? Is it that why? It spun around. Okay. There we go. Straighten it out. Pull this back. Left it a little long so I can lengthen it. Okay. Or pull the length back to where I want it. That's a really smart tip for tires out there. If you have trouble with your tail, always leave it a little long and just don't lock it in place fully. And then as you see Jake doing right now, he can kind of adjust it, get it to the length he wants so there's consistency in his flies. There you go. Wrap up here. Start my taper. Now we'll see if we can find the scissors. They've been eluding us all day. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get ourselves to tape again. That's the inside joke. They, they don't know what we're talking about. Long story. Build me a slight taper. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, that's about right for me right there. The thinner the better. Yep. Um, All right, we're ready for the quill. Jake, will you tell us um, how did you prep this Polish quill? So uh, the big thing is I, I take what color I want to use or a couple colors I want to use and I leave it in hot water um, and I'll, you know, sometimes I'll leave it in hot water for days. Yeah. Um, you know, I basically, on thinner flies, I'll, I'll use, you know, the thin piece I'll trim off to where I want to use it like I did here. Kind of like the tip of the quill. The tip of the quill. Yeah. Um, on the thicker part here on bigger flies, it takes more of the body, so I like to, to trim up the stem a little bit more on the thinner part, so I'm getting a little bit thicker part, less wraps, yeah. more quill showing. Okay. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. Tie it in here on an angle and kind of get where I feel like it's going to wrap good. All right. Yeah, that, that quill looks really, really nice. I like to see that kind of that separation between the color and the, the dark part of the stem. What color is this quill? This is a ginger. Okay. And that right there is where I, I want it. I'm going to use the rotary feature on this vise, okay. my hackle pliers. I'm going to grab it. Pull down here. Mm -hmm. just, use this to wrap back. Yeah, as you're wrapping this forward, I tie on a rotary vise. I don't really share the rotary feature on my videos just because I know not everyone has a rotary vise. I'm not sure about your thoughts, but anytime somebody asks if they should buy one, I almost always say yes just because, Absolutely. man, they make such consistent bodies. And I can just see as you're doing this, you can be so precise with it. Almost too precise. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Coming back on it. So I'm going to trim the quill here. I use an X-Acto knife for a lot of stuff yeah. just because it gets a thinner cut. And sometimes scissors, you just can't get in there and tight little spots. Mm -mm. So just going to do a little wrap and I'm going to whip finish it off. So here, the little feature here, we're going to do a little hot spot, I guess you'd call it, is I'm going to take a little bit of UV tinsel. This is a Hens um, flat tinsel. Bring it back just a little bit so it's like flush with the hook if you can, Jake. Oh, perfect, right there. LPK 100 flat tinsel. Can you show uh, us it from the side too. UV. Oh, yeah. Um, it's great stuff for a little rib. Um, what I'm going to do with it is lay it in here on the, okay. the side. So is this just really like skinny tinsel? Is that it, what I'm it's guessing? It's basically like regular tinsel. It's just one, I think it's one one hundredth of an okay. inch. Um, and basically what I'm doing here is just kind of building up a little head. I'm going to take this tinsel and kind of go around the quill a little bit mm. and I'm going to work my way up as much as I can but the goal is just to get a little little bit right behind the the bead yeah and tie it off and Jeez. what that does is give it a little um, Kind of your hot spot, I guess you'd call yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, there's so many guys out there that use stuff like Glow Bright that really just it jumps. Whereas this is a little bit it's less real intrusive, you know. Subdued. Yeah, I like um, that. You know, it's it's very very mild, and as I go and tie it off, I'm gonna finish with my putting on my Sally Hansons here make a little head okay so 
I'm take this thread. I'm gonna do one more wrap because the thread was kind of bind in there. Up on top here, I'm gonna take my exacto again, trim it down, and I always do a little bit of head cement first. Mm -hmm. It's the fly tight head cement. This, this is kind of a precautionary measure. Yeah. Um, do that in there. And I'm going to take my Sally Hansen's Insta Dry Black. Do a little gulp here. Yeah. Make a nice little wing case there. Now, I've not used the Sally Hansen's Insta Dry. This stuff, I'm guessing, dries pretty quick, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, they're all about the same, to be honest okay. with you. Okay. I feel like uh, um, this does dry a little bit faster if you blow on it and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, it does take a little bit to set. Um, you know, I always usually leave it for about five minutes, so. Okay. In this case, we'll take a minute break and come back and show you the rest. Okay, so we're dry now? Yeah, we're dry. Um, I'm going to take my Solarez UV bone dry. You got it. Um, I got a little tennis brush here that I used. I'm just going to get it. Nice. Now, they didn't see what you did there. Did you just dip the, um, the dental brush in into the, the dryer? I dipped it in the Solarez. Okay. And basically, I like to do that because it kind of controls the spots I do. Um, now tell me about this dental pick. Where do you get these things? You can get these at Amazon. Yeah. And they're super cheap. I mean, I'm talking five, five bucks for. You want to get the smallest they make. I took. Okay. I had the opportunity, and I went through the trials and tribulations and got the bigger sizes. Um, so I still like to take my fingers and kind of mat. I'm not yeah. one that likes to keep a lot of glue on there. Okay. Um, but you know that's. That's just enough to cover and just seal. Enough to cover. Um, then we're gonna take our UV light, curing light. And I love the bone dry stuff. There's no question. It seals like now. Yeah, best in the business. Yeah, absolutely. So if I know there was somebody that he commented on one of my videos once and said that the the Solaris wasn't curing for him and. He was very critical and I, you know, I asked him a little bit about it and about six months later he contacted me and said he was wrong, the batteries in his flashlight were dying. So if, if it's not curing, check your batteries first, more than likely, I mean, I've ran into that problem a couple times. You know, through, throughout the years yeah. I've tried about everything and when they came out bone dry I was skeptical and they're the best in the business. It's good, yeah, it's really it's good stuff, business. no question. So that should be about done. And that's our variation of my soft tackle peritigone, but it's nothing to do with soft tackle. That's all right. We're gonna, we're gonna call this Jake's soft tackle peritigone, sans the soft tackle. How's Minus. That? <laughs> I love it. All right, cool. Hey, Jake, um, let's change the camera angle a little bit, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the differences between this and the original and a couple other things, okay? All righty. All right, cool. So you just saw Jake tie his soft tackle Paragon, the non soft tackle version. Variation. No, thanks, man. Thanks for sharing that variation uh, with us. Um, we're very lucky. We're filming kind of in a different location. We're filming at Jake's Pennsylvania spot. Jake's associated down in Tennessee and Pennsylvania. We'll get to all that. But before we do, let's go back to the tying. What yeah. else do you want to tell us about this fly? Um, it's, you know, I, I tied the variation on a uh, Hornet 230, but it can be tied on a jig, um, a straight shank nymph hook. Uh, Never really did scuds, but um, it's a great variation pattern. Um, changing the quill, hmm. changing the um, tinsel hotspot, which I never did, but you can. Thread color, um, bead color. I mainly do it in two or three different colors. Uh, an olive, and I do it with a natural quill. And that's mainly um, down in my home water in South Holston. We have a ton of blue wing olive nymphs. And um, it's kind of what I was doing, looking for a, a uh, soft, sinking pertigum but a maybe a little bit of a merger type look yeah. and um you know it created itself and it, it it's a great pattern and the variation we tied uh by no means was my you know pat weiss a good buddy on pro staff competitive angler he uh showed me that pattern and um i kind of added a tinsel with it and you know so it, it wasn't my idea but um i just ran with it like everybody else you know should okay know? 
Well, that's cool. And run with it yourself, you know, everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. And Pat's a really great guy. He um, pro staff for competitive anglers, yeah, you he, said, and he guides as well a little bit. Us, yeah. I know he's on Team Fly Fishing USA. The world team. Yeah, yeah he's on that, that he's big on team. team. He's on the world the team. Traveling team. Great fisherman. I had a chance uh, to go out with him and fish once. Fantastic angler. Yeah, one Fantastic. So if this fly is associated, it's probably a good one. <laughs> um, let's talk about fishing side of it. Anything, any tips or any ways that you want to recommend to fish it, or is it just one of those all-purpose nymphs? It's kind of an all-purpose nymph, but I, I do mainly fish it uh, tight line, Euro style. Um, but, you know, when I'm guiding, I kind of do indicator uh, whatever way I need to, and it, it works pretty good each way. Yeah, very um, cool. We, we, a little short story with falling mill, um, they sent us samples and we had a 39 fish day on one of the samples Jeez. and we only used the one fly and, and it held up all day. So, um, sample approved. <laughs> That's really awesome. Now let's talk about this. And I think you may have heard me say congrats to him. Fooling Mills is carrying this fly with, with his name on it, which is always a big deal for any tire out there. So congrats thank again. You, thank you. Um, so is that how it works? They tie a bunch of them, they get them ready, then they send, send out the samples to they make do. sure. Yeah, kind of make sure you, you know, that it's what you wanted and what you thought it would be. And, um, you know, the only way I could tell was put in uh, a client's hand and go out and test yeah. it. And, it held up uh, 39 fish, and I now have awesome. some other people to back me up on that. Oh, too. that's great. Um, he didn't give me any of these samples. I don't, <laughs> I don't I gave them all out, but I don't, I don't know. No, I'm kidding. Um, and I know this is now the second fly that you've tied on our channel. Uh, the first one was Jake's um, Improved Zebra, Zebra Midge. Midge. Yeah. Great fly, awesome one. But just so we're all on the same page, Jake, you're not just into nymphs as well. No, no. Fooling Mills is carrying a dry fly call. Yeah, it's the fluffer. Um, I really like the dry fly fish, and it's it, it, where I'm at in the South Holston. And, with Taga, we have, you know, some of the best dry fly fishing in the country, and um, it was based off a sulfur, um, kind of a puff daddy, mixed with a dun of some sort, yeah. and it took me a couple years to really get it to where I wanted it. But um, yeah, you know, that's another fish uh, fly that's worked great for. Uh, me and a lot of other people can attest to that. Yeah. Do you see this? He's teasing all of you right now. He's not tying that one yet for us. But that we'll, one's available. We'll, that one's we'll get you. We'll get you to tie that one. But they can find that one. Fulling Mills. Fulling Mill. Anywhere Fulling Mills uh, sells their fly, um, I should have them in the shop. Pretty much always available. Okay. At Competitive Angler. Um, so okay. they're. They're pretty they're reason there. available. Perfect. And I think you probably heard just hearing him, hearing Jake talk about everything. He owns Competitive Angler, a fantastic website. Check that out. And you also got on the South Holston. Yeah, for the South Holston River Company, you can contact me and check out some of the fantastic fishing we have down there. Um, it's my cell phone, 724-961-4234. And you know, you can email me at jake at southholstonrivercompany.com or jake at competitiveangler.com you got it so just basically jake at anything.com yeah i made that joke in the first video not as good this time but that's how you can reach out contact jake by all means um, i've taken a guided trip with jake before my wife and i went down to the holston oh, we had a blast we had a such a time. we had a great yeah. fishing trip so i encourage you to do it after you take the trip with him just leave a comment on this video tell me how it went i guarantee they'll have a blast oh, too yeah. it's great fishery yeah oh awesome dry fly nymphs, nymphs more midges, than you, whatever you want more than i expected i'll say yeah, that that's awesome yeah man. well uh, i guess we probably should wrap this up jake one more time thank you so much it's my pleasure uh, we love that i hope all of you enjoyed watching jake tie this variation you probably know i love variation so whenever he offered to tie one i said let's do it yeah. um if you'd like to watch more videos like this you can check out my website which is troutandfeather.com you can also find trout and feather on facebook and on instagram um, if you have any questions or comments you know how to reach out to jake you can leave a comment Comment down below in the comments section of this page or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com thank you everyone so much for watching jake thank you again for coming thank on thank you guys we'll see all of you guys next time